Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in Krakow. Welcome to the WIRE 2012 conference, the week of innovative regions in Europe. So the, the topic of our conference is delivering the innovation union at the regional level. So we have practically such a big three pillars of the conference, innovative regions in the horizon 2020. We have a pillar which is called stairway to excellence. And the third one is networking for European research area at the regional level. My name is Andrzej Siemaszko. I'm director of National Contact Point uh, in Poland, and I'm the, the main organizer of this conference. I have a great pleasure now to, to introduce to you Marshal of the Małopolska Wojewodship, Marek Sowa. Panie Marszał. Dzień dobry, witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Jest mi niezmiernie miło powitać Państwa w gmachu Opery Krakowskiej, jednego z nowych obiektów w przestrzeni kulturalnej, które przy w ostatnich latach udało się w Małopolsce wybudować. Jestem przekonany, że zarówno znakomici goście, jak również dobra frekwencja podczas dzisiejszego wydarzenia podkreślą rangę jego i pokażą, jak aktualnym i ważkim zagadnieniem jest dla regionów rozwój oparty na wiedzy i innowacji. Jako województwo doceniamy wybór Krakowa na miejsce flagowej dyskusji Tygodnia Innowacyjnych Regionów. Mam nadzieję, że podczas tych dwóch dni przybliżymy się do modelu Unii Innowacji na poziomie regionalnym, którego realizacja jest myślą przewodnią naszego spotkania. W obecnej sytuacji gospodarczej w czasie kryzysu finansowego oraz nowych globalnych wyzwań innowacje są ważniejsze niż kiedykolwiek wcześniej. Zdolność Unii Europejskiej do wyjścia z kryzysu i sprostania długoterminowym wyzwaniom opiera się nie tylko na odpowiedzialności w zakresie finansów publicznych oraz mocnych fundamentach przemysłowych w gospodarce, ale również na kreatywności, umiejętności zarządzania zmianą oraz elastyczności rynku pracy. Musimy oszczędzać, musimy pracować więcej i mądrzej, ale przede wszystkim musimy uwierzyć w siebie. Uwierzyć w Unię Europejską, w jej zdolność do konkurencji i podmiotowego decydowania o swojej przyszłości. Przykład Polski pokazuje, że możliwy jest wzrost również w czasie kryzysu. Obecnie naszym zadaniem jest oparcie tego wzrostu w dużo większym stopniu o innowacje. To zadanie pojmujemy bardzo serio również w Małopolsce, w regionie, który od blisko 650 lat, to jest od momentu założenia Uniwersytetu Jagiellońskiego, jest liderem polskiej nauki i innowacji. W tworzeniu polityki innowacyjnej na szczeblu regionalnym zaleca się z jednej strony oparcie jej o gruntowną analizę silnych stron regionu, a z drugiej o dokładną analizę trendów zachodzących w globalnej gospodarce. Przez długi czas naszą największą barierą w realizacji tego zadania w Polsce był brak koordynacji w systemach podejmowania decyzji, w szczególności brak umiejętności dokonywania wyborów strategicznych oraz słaba współpraca podmiotów odpowiedzialnych za politykę B plus R, w tym uczelni i biznesu. Przed tymi wyborami i dylematami stoi właśnie nasz region. Jesteśmy na etapie tworzenia regionalnej strategii innowacji w oparciu o inteligentną specjalizację bazującą na potencjale naszego regionu. Punktem wyjścia do prac nad inteligentną specjalizacją było badanie metodą Foresight perspektywicznych technologii opartych na potencjale regionu. Jego wyniki zostały uwzględnione w strategii rozwoju województwa małopolskiego do roku 2020, gdzie posłużyły jako uzasadnienie dla kierunków polityki rozwoju. Zgodnie z tymi zapisami zidentyfikowano kluczowe dziedziny specjalizacji małopolskiej. Są to life science, technologie energetyczne, w tym czysta energia, budownictwo energooszczędne oraz technologie informacyjne, komunikacyjne i multimedia. Oczywiście nie chcemy ograniczać się tylko do tych obszarów, gdyż przy obecnym tempie rozwoju technologii należy przyjąć otwartą postawę. Otwartość może mieć tutaj zresztą różne wymiary. Inteligentna specjalizacja powinna również oznaczać inteligentną współpracę. Należy szukać obszarów synergii również tej międzyregionalnej. Na takim założeniu opiera się projekt strategicznej współpracy Małopolski i Śląska. Silny śląski przemysł w połączeniu z potencjałem naukowym małopolskich uczelni 
powinny zaowocować eksplozją innowacyjności, choćby w obszarze technologii energetycznych, w tym czystych technologii węglowych. Staramy się też poprawić powiązania komunikacyjne, tak aby Polska Południowa stała się zagłębiem nowej, wysokotechnologicznej gospodarki. W ten projekt zainicjowany przez samorządy obu regionów włączyli się już partnerzy naukowi, biznesowi i społeczni, co świadczy o dużym i naturalnym jego potencjale. Wiemy, jak trudne i odpowiedzialne jest zadanie polegające na podjęciu decyzji odnośnie koncentracji środków finansowych na określonych dziedzinach gospodarki. Mam szczerą nadzieję, że najbliższe dni i dyskusja w tym gronie, w gronie tak znakomitych gości przybliży nas do wypracowania skutecznych rozwiązań w tym zakresie. Małopolska to bowiem miejsce sprzyjające dyskusji o rozwoju innowacyjności. Wierzę, że ta okoliczność w połączeniu z tradycyjną małopolską gościnnością pozwoli wytworzyć w tych dniach klimat stymulujący powstawanie powiązań usprawniających prowadzenie polityki innowacyjnej na poziomie europejskim i regionalnym. Szanowni Państwo, zapraszam i zachęcam do uczestnictwa w dyskusji, mając jednocześnie nadzieję, nadzieję że opuszczając Kraków będą Państwo mieli poczucie, że zrobiliśmy kolejny krok w kierunku budowania innowacyjnej gospodarki Unii Europejskiej na poziomie regionalnym. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much, Marshal. And I have a pleasure now to, to read the foreword prepared by Professor Barbara Kudrycka, Minister of Science and Higher Education in Poland. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the role of innovation, especially at the regional level, has grown rapidly in recent years. Innovation is seen as a new source of growth for many economies all, all over the world. The Europe 2020 strategy and the Innovation Union flagship underscored the importance of innovation in the EU context. Taking into account this strategic document, the question is how to better design and implement innovation and regional policies, and how to take full advantage of the complementarities and synergies between them. Horizon 2020 and the cohesion policy are strictly connected. Horizon 2020 supports research and development activities of highest quality across the EU, while cohesion policy aims at strengthening the foundations of, on which the European regions, especially the less developed ones, can build their innovativeness. Horizon 2020 should support regional research infrastructure to ensure greater access to excellent research facilities. Horizon 2020 and cohesion policy need to be fully integrated if Europe's intellectual capital and the potential of its regions are to be fully used to strengthen the European research area. Complementarities and synergy should be achieved by use of support instruments such as teaming of excellent research institutions and less developed regions, twinning of staff, expert advice, establishment of centers of excellence, creating innovative clusters, the question is, do we knew any other noteworthy instruments? Any discussion on the complementarities and synergies between innovation and regional policies cannot omit issues related to the directions of support, particularly the strengthening critical mass and creating so-called smart specializations. It is fully justified that the support, especially in the framework of cohesion policy, is directed toward, towards areas and fields which enable regions to strengthen their competitive advantages and economic specialization. Excellent examples of strengthening regional potential and regional excellence can be found among the investment finance under the cohesion policy in Poland over the last few years especially state-of-the-art research laboratories as well as educational infrastructure. The issue of smart specialization is addressed particularly by cohesion policy. However, the question is, how can this process be supported by Horizon 2020? The regional dimension of innovation policy has been discussed at many conferences, especially WIRE 1, WIRE 2. It is also an important topic for the trio of presidencies, Pol Poland, Denmark, and Cyprus. I am convinced that the conference Y 2012 will be an excellent platform to further advance the debate about the role of innovation and regional policies and to summarize the discussions which have take, taken place so far. Signed by Professor Barbara Kudrycka, Minister of Science and Higher Education in Poland. So thank you very much.
And now I would like to invite a person who knows everything about wire conferences, wire one, wire two, and wire three, Lambert van Nistelrooy, so member of the European Parliament. Okay, you see, welcome, welcome to the Game Changers, because today we don't talk about the deficit, we don't, don't talk about the Euro, but we talk about investment, we talk about human capacity, we talk about how to get things more in an integrated way, game changing, putting other subjects on the agenda of the public debate. I think this is what our citizens want, and that's why I'm so glad that you are here, and as said by the President, the ladies and gentlemen, ministers, etc., representatives, that I'm here. I was in wire one, I was in wire two, and I'm also here as not only the member of the parliament in both committees, in regional um, affairs, policies, the main rapporteur for the next period, but also in the ITRE committee, where I'm um, responsible as in the negotiation team, and also especially for the European Institute for Innovation and Technology. And an additional reason might be that I'm the president of a network in European Parliament, started some four years ago, Knowledge for Innovation that strives for a better combination of the first-class research, fundamental research, the outcomes there, and the real production and the real quality of life and the market shares that we have in Europe. That's the innovation challenge that Mrs. Gagan Quinn took up. Let me, um, in this welcome, stress some points of the background and immediately have a first glimpse at the position European Parliament takes, because for the first time we are now in a mature stage of Parliament. We have co-decision. The Council has to negotiate with us and we have to come to an agreement, and I will show you where, in the perspective of regions, that probably we bring totally new ideas. Let me go back. Last year, from the Knowledge for Innovation, European Commission and the Polish Presidency had their uh, meeting in, in Warsaw. And there we saw a couple of things. I just shortly say them. Knowledge and innovation is crucial. This is the way forward. And the second thing is that we need another balance in Europe, another geographical, uh, more, uh, uh, more balanced situation in territorial uh, development between the old and the new member states. We need to develop our skills, our human capacity in a better way, implementing smart specialization in all member states, and a stronger focus on innovation and industrial leadership. This is what was the European disease. This is what lacked. Coming in industries, coming in SMEs, that take up this knowledge that we generate from the research funds. And, of course, once again, the skills. Where we talk about is, in fact, in three points. It's the regional dimension, the territorial dimension, it's smart specialization, and it's the stairway to excellence, and the ideas that are coming up also from the wire conferences, from the project behind this, ideas and both practice. And these are really front-runner ideas that we can bring into legislation and funding in the period 2014-2020. Sorry. I go the other way around. Just a glimpse, there are so many maps that show always the same, that the take-up of uh, innovation and research is, for 90% of this framework seven, 
in the old member states. This is what should not happen in the next period. This is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. In a, so in a Europe that is uh, driven by values, that is a solidarity, solidarity driven, and that is both work and competition. We know, but how to solve that? I was rapporteur in 2009 about the European Commission's uh, Green Book on Territorial Cohesion. And for the first time, all institutions, including European Parliament, accepted the three C's. We say yes to concentration because we need critical mass in those areas where you can make it, where you can bring it together, where you can be seen on the picture of the global development, go to Toulouse to have the big airplanes built in Europe. Do it together, do it there or do it nowhere. You use it or you lose it. This was the key I accepted. Concentration, yes, but under very, very strong preconditions, under the two other C's of cooperation, it's not that the winner takes it all. This is not a European value. No, it's cooperation in an open innovation strategy. And the second thing is, the third C is connection. Be connected where it happens so that Europe can take up the outcome value of developments in some top regions, the three Cs. And it was accepted for the first time, as I said. It was rejected in the 90s when someone came up with those ideas. But in the actual crisis, in the situation of our downgoing population, we have to do it in another way. We have to be the game changers. And let me take you just by an example to the Netherlands. Now that we come into the phase of making it happen, now that we come into the phase of smart specialization, there are a lot of ideas. Here you see, for instance, in the Netherlands, just the uh, regions that come up with ideas, with creative sector, with bioscience, with uh, the, 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 the things in chemical, industry, food, etc. These are things that come up from the bottom and are presented to the smart specialization. Sorry. But at the same time, you see that the Dutch government comes up with a totally other approach. They come up with let me say main sectors, not a geographical scope. It's okay, it's very good that they take on board the idea of industrial leadership, the same thing as we have what we do in the uh, Horizon 2020, industrial leadership. But this is not combined as an automatically new approach for regional policy. This is the key of the debate. In 2013, every country has to come forward with their own investment strategy, combining knowledge and innovation, knowledge and uh, research and innovation, together with, with these funds and own investments. And this will be combined in an agreement for 2014, 2020, in the so-called partnership contract. So bringing together these worlds, as I showed from the Netherlands, is everywhere at stake, and the actual debate of the wire tree, as I hope. Talking about money, talk about synergy. I made, I made in the beginning of 2010 this uh, document on synergies, a report in the parliament. You see on the red side, this is the uh, uh, framework seven. It's the 54 billion euro. And if you look to the right side in, in the, the yellow, you see the, the part already spent on research, research infrastructure within the structural funds. And this is uh, around and about some, some uh, 80 billion euros now. So you see that in talking about money, there can be made enormous step forward combining it. At the left side, you see the R&D is excellence driven. This is the central Criterium, it's top down, it's, they select the best in all those instruments. And on the right side, you see the regional dimension. This is the bottom up um, process. 
by thematic concentration what's done more uh, concrete for the next period. Sorry. It's already in the actual period that you have, let me say, cohesion policy. I talk about new cohesion. It's no longer getting money to the regions and they will see what they do with the money or the countries. It's thematic concentration. It's working on this agenda of growth and jobs in thematic concentration. This is the conditionality. These are preconditions before that you get the money. And you see that the R&D coming from the top, let me say this top-down driven approaches from Brussels, from the national states, in the cohesion that they going to merge in concrete programs, using a lot of instruments around it. You see, existing things like regions of economic change, like the SIP program, now called COSME for the next period, the European Investment Bank, that's coming over with new financial instruments like guarantees that vitalize the power of, of our instruments uh, and enable our companies. The EIT in several things um, and our several other programs. So we have a lot of experience and can make it concrete in the legislation now. Just a glimpse to the Parliament. Where do we stand at this moment? State of play of the report. We have two rapporteurs, Mrs. Crail from the Socialists and me from EPP. We have a very strong position in the parliament because the, when the two biggest groups bring forward their ideas, there won't be a big debate as I expect. We have a lot of support. We see the ERDF. We see the ERDF just as the stairway to excellence. Excellence driven in all our regions. We come forward with the idea to oblige 1% of the ERDF, roughly, some 50 billion to be spent outside their own area. Usually, regions get the money and start immediately spending it. No, this is not the Europe of the future. The Europe of the future is those of the three C's. Concentration, cooperation, connection. It means that you have to know where you stand in this thematic concentration, in your own smart specialization, in relation to the other regions, in relation to the other universities, in relation to the other knowledge initiatives, whatever. Know where you stand, know where to go. In cooperation, we can't spend the money just in every region and wishing them good luck. No, it's a more integrated. And that's why I put the amendment together with Jan Albrecht, who will speak in the afternoon here, to put at least 1%, and then after that, up to 10% even. Regions are allowed to spend outside their region, to make initiatives like regions of knowledge happen out of the ERDF, not just out, out of a cooperation part in the ETC, European uh, Territorial Cooperation, but out of the main budget so we're going to create an other instruments, existing and new instruments, regions of knowledge. We take it in the, uh, in the ERDF, a research potential, same thing, and then easier access to the EIT with several knowledge and innovation clusters, and of course, thematic concentration, result-oriented, you know the system. Ending. Just with, with, with a glimpse of the territorial and thematic things. This is, this is the key thing. I think when I look to the, to the regions of knowledge in which the best of them cooperate on some, some themes, or you look to the clusters, to the, to the, to the locations of the EIT, the EIT will have much more budget in the next period. This has to be brought together and the wire conference has the possibility to get it in the right track, I think. The next steps, just in the parliament, we will vote at the 11th of July about the position of the parliament on the regional policy. After summer, the ITRE committee will do the same. 
but they did not present their, their positions yet. We are a little on the, on the forefront. Then we will organize the uh, Knowledge for Innovation Conference uh, of the, um, in the Parliament. We, 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 we did it already three times, inviting all the stakeholders, again, cooperation with the European Commission, etc., etc. 2013, the, the national partnership contracts, extremely important. I know that in most countries, the first drafts are already there. They are already taking up, talking about game changers. And then the start of the official period. OK. Having the possibility to, uh, to give you a glimpse of the um, activities in the European Parliament, it just underlines the importance that you are here. You are the actors in the regions, in the countries, both from the knowledge society, knowledge communities, as from the regions. And combining this might be the best. Looking forward to your contribution, getting it on board in European Parliament, getting it on board in the Knowledge for Innovation conference is crucial. I might say, have a good conference, be aware, Take care. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Lambert, and for this introduction and, and discussing uh, issues which we should, uh, should uh, take into bo uh, board uh, during this conference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so I, I think it is also important to note that at each session we have rapporteur, and rapporteurs will uh, wrap up all, all the findings and, and discussion uh, at the end of the conference. So there will be a special, special uh, session for this. Then we would, we would like to transmit our message from, from the conference to the European Parliament, to the European Commission, there is also idea to, to bring to such a message to, to the next uh, European Innovation Summit, which will be organized in Brussels at, at the end of, of, of the year. So um, I think we should be very active, uh, not only during these two days of, of, of work during the, the conference, but afterwards, because this is the, the right time for, for contributing to, to the, the uh, final versions of, of the Horizon 2020 and, and to, to the uh, cohesion policy. So in this way, I, I think that the, the welcome session is, is uh, over, and now we may uh, start our, our first uh, opening uh, session. So let, let me take this seat because we will <laughs> continue this way. Okay, so uh, we'll have, we start fr from two important uh, video messages from our commissioner. So the, the first one is uh, Mary Gagan Queen, the commissioner for, for research and innovation, and, and uh, let us uh, see the, the video message from, from the, the commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, while I unfortunately cannot be with you in person today, I'm delighted to be able to say a few words of introduction to this important conference. First of all, my thanks to the Polish organizers for hosting in Krakow this third week of Innovative Regions in Europe event, following Wire 1 in Grenada in 2010 and Wire 2 in Debrecen last year. Wire has now become one of the most important events in the research and innovation calendar, and long may this continue, not least with the proposed fourth Wire conference in Ireland next year. WIRE 3 continues the important work of the two previous conferences in presenting both the challenges and opportunities for boosting innovation in our regions. But this WIRE conference is doubly important because it is the first to take place after the European Commission presented twin proposals for the future programmes on research and innovation, on Horizon 2020 and on cohesion policy. At the heart of these proposals is a major push to create better synergies between these policies in the domain of research and innovation, building on what has gone before. Future support for research and innovation will be conditional on the existence of national or regional smart specialisation strategies that will steer funding priorities. 
Horizon 2020's focus on excellence will be complemented by measures to ensure that the programme is open to the widest possible range of participants, including newcomers. Talent will be nurtured to grow into excellence so that innovators and researchers from all over Europe can benefit. Under Horizon 2020, we are proposing actions to close the innovation divide in Europe. For example, by twinning existing and emerging centres of excellence, attracting outstanding academics to institutions with a strong potential through the European Research Area Chairs, and by supporting smart specialisation and international networking. We have also been careful to suggest practical links at the operational level with greater harmonisation of financial rules and it will be possible to combine funding from Horizon 2020 and the cohesion funds for the same project. Our region will also be able to invest up to 10% of our cohesion programme's budget in a different So let's, let's restart. Hmm? Okay, so, so <laughs> no, the, the, this is the, the, the end of the, the video, so we, we have to, to in some way uh, Sorry for this. Uh, it, it was something wrong with this, this uh, file with, with, uh, we received. Anyway, the commissioners started to, to, to talk about very important issue of, of this uh, uh, ring fencing of some, some of, of, of uh, money from, from structural funds devoted to, to, to research. And so let's, let's start now the, the video from, from Commissioner uh, Han, uh, Commissioner for, for uh, Regional Development, and, and maybe we, we get this message from, from the second video message. So, so. Okay, so, so uh, I would like to ask our colleagues to, to start the, the second presentation. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, innovation will be at the heart of European recovery in the years to come. Without innovation, it will not be possible for Europe to get back on the path of growth and employment. And regions will have a central role to play in this innovation-driven recovery. This is why our annual WIRE event is so important. Your debates will help create the jobs of tomorrow. I cannot be with you today to take a direct part in the debate, but you know that I am a strong advocate of innovation and that I stand right behind your work. Together with my fellow Commissioner, Mrs. Gagan Quinn, we have dedicated much time and resources to developing an improved framework for innovation after 2013. We have come to the conclusion that if we are to make the most out of the innovative ideas which are born in Europe, we need to ensure that European public funding for innovation is used in the most efficient possible manner. This is why we have put on the table far-reaching proposals that will go a long way towards boosting innovation. We are proud in particular to have been able to bring our financial instruments much closer to each other. Cohesion policy and research and innovation policy must work hand in hand and reinforce each other in the future. In the period 2007-2013, 25% of the cohesion policy budget has been allocated to research and innovation. Across the European Union, we have financed new research infrastructure, new activities in research centers and enterprises, clusters and networks for turning knowledge into marketable innovation. We have provided support services to SMEs and improved our ICT capacity. Our intention for the future is to intensify this effort even further. Cohesion policy from 2014 will focus even more on innovation. Innovation is the first of our 11 proposed investment priorities. 
We have proposed that member states and regions have to allocate minimum shares of their cohesion funding to innovation. We have also proposed that before a region is granted cohesion funding, it must present a robust regional innovation strategy. Without a clear idea of what we want to change and where we want to be in 10 years, we cannot be efficient in our investments. To assist regions in this process, the Commission has set up a smart specialization platform based in Seville and designed to provide regions with the best possible expert support. Last but not least, the Commission has proposed a much increased synergy between cohesion instruments and Horizon 2020. There is now a much clearer description of the role of each instrument and more importantly, of how these roles complement each other. The onus is now on regions to make sure they build joint action plans for ensuring synergies at their level. For those with a clear idea of where they want to be at 2020, there are now much better linkages between what Cohesion offers and what Horizon 2020 offers. Ladies and gentlemen, as European Commissioner for Regional Policy, I have been arguing strongly that Europe needs to focus its public investments on growth and that innovation must be at the centre of these investments. Without innovation, we will simply not be able to get out of the turbulences we are experiencing now. You, the representatives of regions and cities, are all key players in this. You will need to show leadership and commitment to push for innovation and secure growth throughout the European Union. You can count on all the services of the European Commission to be by your side in this process. I wish you a very fruitful conference and I would ask you to make sure that you share your results with us as soon as possible. Okay, so thank you for, for these very strong messages from our commissioner. I am sure that both uh, commissioners speak practically the same words. So, so this, this uh, synergy between these two instruments uh, should be very strong and that the conference is devoted to, to define some, some new ideas to, and, and, uh, to, to transmit these this ideas to the commission, to, to the European Parliament. So uh, let us start from from very important uh, guest, uh, Minister Ivona Wendel, Under Secretary of State uh, in uh, Ministry of Regional Development in Poland. So it will be your responsibility to, in case of Poland, to, to define, to, to program now something like, like 20 billion euro for research and innovation. So how, how preparation for such, a, such an enormous budget uh, in, in Poland uh, are, are progressing. So, uh, Ivona Wendel, please. Oh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to uh, thank the organizers uh, for the opportunity to participate in the conference, which is going to be extremely interesting. Uh, among the speakers, we will find people connected with unions, research and development programs, cohesion policy, the representatives of innovative companies and many experts. We can therefore count on interested, interesting discussion and the opportunity to exchange views on the various issues related to development policy based on innovation. I am sure that Poland is a great place to host, host such a conference as we are uh, 2012, uh, as said uh, Marek Sowa, our Marshal, Voivodzio of Małopolska. In recent years, many important investments have been implemented in our uh, country, which in effect will contribute to strengthening the innovative capacity of Poland at, and uh, its, its regions. A big part of them have been implemented through co-financing from structural fund. Uh, I have to say about money, because without uh, the money it will be much, much difficult. For example, in, in the Innovative Economy Operational Program, to support research, research projects and R&D infrastructure, over 2.6 billion euro is allocated. 
Nearly 50 projects from the first and second priority axis is on the list of individual projects, the list of key investment in terms of innovative, innovativeness Polish economy. The largest investment, which receives significant support, also called major projects, according to the community rules, had to be submitted for approval uh, by the European Commission. I would like to emphasize uh, with pleasure that almost all these projects have already been highly priced and appro approved by the Commission, which, as we know from the example of other ma major product projects, is not easy. So we see that our investment in research, infrastructure and laboratories were well thought out and planned. Thanks to the structural funds, the quality of research equipment has been improved and in many cases has reached the world level. There will be the potential of Polish units to carry out independent, advanced research programs and to participate in, the, in international projects in increasing. Well equipment and properly managed Polish research units may be a more attractive partner for the business by conducting research for which there is market demand. Most projects are still in progress, but I'm firmly convinced that they will soon be a strong impetus to the modernization, which will significantly affect the ability to pursue innovation policy in Poland. According to Ministry Kudrycka, development is always based on knowledge. Today, however, we are witnessing an unprecedented acceleration of the production, diffusion, and diversification of its transfer. Increasing competitiveness requires bigger funds for activities related to innovation and the appropriate policy that will allow proper targeting of resources and well-programmed instruments. It's been two years since the adoption of Strategy 2020, which constitutes the European response the new challenges connected with promoting smart growth based on knowledge, innovation, education, and digital society. In the wake on, on this strategy and its accompanying document, uh, Innovation Union, it is proposed in the period 2014-2020 to concentrate community resources on tasks associated with fostering innovation. Budget of the new research framework program Horizon uh, 2020 is 80 billion euro, almost 50% more than the seventh framework program. In addition, strengthening areas of research, technological development, and innovation is the first and the most important of the 11 proposed objectives of the cohesion policy after 2013. Although the Horizon 2020 program and programs financed by the structural fund will generally have different principles for the implementation. Their objective and the instruments are complementary, as commissioner said, of course. Horizon program will focus on supporting research excellence, while the cohesion policy will build innovative capacity at national and regional level for construction of appropriate infrastructure and human, human potential. Cohesion policy will therefore be an effective tool on the way to excellence for the preparation of Polish research teams to participate in European programs. And the second important issue, smart specialization is a mechanism that aims to contribute to the efficient use of EU funds. It assumes that the concentration of funds in these areas of support that will allow to use of region-specific growth opportunities. Innovative region, which base its development on smart specialization, will be able to generate and absorb of innovations and build on this basis its competitiveness. Development priorities for the coming years have already been designed. Currently, the key task is to transfer the objective of the EU innovation policies at the regional level. For regions, it means, first of all, to identify areas with the greatest potential for growth and preparation of the implementation system of smart specialization. The fulfillment of this task requires the involvement of all parties, which can make a significant, a significant contribution to the development of a regional strategy, 
government, academias, business and NGOs. Priorities identified in the framework of regional smart specialization must be the result of broad agreement. I think that in this respect, Polish regions are well prepared. The awareness that an effective regional development policy is the result of collective effort of various actors is already fairly well established. To a large extent, it is the benefit of experience from the preparation and implementation of regional operational programs. Ladies and gentlemen, during the WIRE 2012 conference, we will have the opportunity to participate in the many inspiring discussion. I hope that our conclusion will contribute to the formulation of interesting ideas. And of course, from my point of view, recommendation on the next steps for the preparation of appropriate instrument to support. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. <laughs> Clara de la Torre, Director of... You, you, okay. You. <laughs> so, of course, uh, we, we see this, this transformation of, of the, the, this, this part of the Commission. So, so extending the research activities towards innovation. So, there is a new name of... of of the, the director, Gen director general, it is it is the, the new duties, and, and so I, I think uh, so. The next step is really to define this this uh, link to, to, to cohesion policy, and, and so what what are ideas from DG Research and Innovation? Clara de la Torre, director at, at the DG Research and Innovation. Thank you, Andre, um, Marshall, Minister, Member of Parliament. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as co-organizers of this conference, uh, let, me, let me first echo the remarks of Commissioner Gagan Quinn and thank the Polish uh, organizers for this third edition of the Week of Innovative Regions in Europe that we are holding here in this fantastic city, Krakow, in this fantastic country, Poland. We know from our um, close contacts over recent months, the effort that has gone into the organization of this uh, conference. And I would personally like to thank uh, Andre Szymaszko and his team uh, for all this hard work. You are rightly uh, pointing out uh, innovation and delivering innovation at, um, in the Innovation Union is an important uh, part of our mandate and is a very appropriate title for this session because it's one of the key uh, objectives that we are trying to achieve in the domain of research innovation, a, great, a greater um, regional focus. When the Innovation Union flagship uh, initiative was adopted already in October 2010, it explicitly emphasized the importance of the regional dimension of innovation, in particular, the need for close links between research and cohesion policy. At the moment, it was wish. Since then, a commissioner, as Commissioner Gagan Quinn has already mentioned, and other speakers too, the policy framework in the Innovation Union has given the practical effect in the proposals for the future of the research programs, Horizon 2020, and for the future cohesion policy. So as I say, from a commitment, from words, we are already into action. As we know, Horizon 2020 will continue to support excellence in order that Europe can maintain and improve its place in the sphere of research and innovation in the face of competition from existing and world and emerging world players. At the same time, research and innovation capacity building through the stairway of excellence will be one, and Commissioner Hahn said it was the first priority, for the future cohesion policy. Our main aim must therefore be to strengthen and deepen the synergies about which we are talking all the time between these two policies in the next programming period. A key policy innovation that will assist this process is what has already been referred to and you all know as the development of smart specialization strategies. And this is the means, I would say the means, by which uh, every region can identify, should identify its own uh, strengths, develop them, build on them, and climb, therefore, the stairway to excellence. 
The further issue is, uh, that is vital is the development of greater networking, that has already been referred to, um, through the European territorial cooperation, creating networks of infrastructures and joint programming, just to name a few initiatives that are possible. Each of these key points, smart specialization, building the stairway of excellence and networking will be examined and debated in our deliberations over the next two days. In this way, WIRE 3 will hopefully make an important contribution, as Mr. Van Nistelrooy was saying, to tackling the uh, future we have ahead of us. And another uh, major challenge that faces us us in the implementation of both programs, ensuring that the key players, you are the key players, dealing with each of these policies at regional, at national, and EU level, talk to each other, understand each other. And this is of utmost importance for things to happen, and I think the Marshall pointed out to that importance in the dialogue between those uh, responsible for regional policy and those responsible for research and innovation policy. Already in the European Parliament in Brussels last week, the committees, uh, regional committees and ITER committees met together and made a very interesting, organized a very interesting public hearing on precisely on synergies between the EU cohesion policy and Horizon 2020. And this was an important example of getting the key players talking and debating the challenges ahead of us. This week, Wire 3, continues the work in an even wider forum with the presence with a lot, already a lot, and hopefully in the forthcoming sessions, more uh, politicians, policy makers, academics, and of course, dare I say more importantly, those working to implement research, innovation, and cohesion policies on the ground. I have every confidence that by the end of our deliberations, we will have made real progress in laying the groundwork for the future development of the Innovation Union at regional level. Finally, I would like to acknowledge that having largely survived the economic, the rough economic climate that continues to affect, unfortunately, the European Union, Poland is well placed to take advantage of the opportunities provided by both Horizon 2020 and the cohesion policy and maintain its progress upwards the stairway to excellence. Thank you very much. So now we should have a very important guest, uh, Jesse Buzek, <laughs> so the, the uh, former president of the European Parliament. Unfortunately, as also as a former uh, prime minister, uh, he was uh, invited by a current Prime Minister Donald Tusk to, to Warsaw for such a meeting of, of uh, Prime Ministers from Poland. But we have uh, a video message from, from Jerzy Buzek, so I would like to ask my colleagues to present this to, to you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, friends, participants of WIRE conference. In times of financial crisis and increasing global competition, the investment in research and development and innovation should be considered as a solution to many of our problems. That is why we have developed the Innovation Union flagship initiative. It calls for following actions, four of them. Increased investments in education, research and development, innovation, as well as information and communication technologies. Facilitating cooperation of researchers and innovators to complete the European research area. Using the structural funds to develop research and innovation capacities across Europe based on smart regional specialization strategies. And Last task, boosting cooperation between science and business to bring more innovation out of research. In the European Union, we are currently working on the budget for the next financial perspective. It is a common agreement 
that much more financial resources, European member states and regional, must be concentrated on research and innovations. Many elements of the Innovation Union strategy must be implemented at the regional level. For this reason, the Week of Innovative Regions conference lies at the heart of a hard political debate. As a forum for strategic discussion, it may contribute widely to defining ideas and instruments necessary for smart regional development based on knowledge and innovation. It is highly symbolic that Krakow hosts the WIRE conference. The city is proud of its Ragilonian University, one of the oldest in this part of Europe. In this region, about 500 million euro, mostly from structural funds, has been recently invested in the innovation ecosystem. Taking into account that Poland is an important beneficiary of the structural funds, it is our special responsibility to use the WIRE conference to offer answers to such pressing questions as how to reorient the cohesion policy more towards research, technology development and innovations, how to optimize and streamline all resources, how to use smart regional specialization strategies, how to exploit and develop all possible synergies between the Horizon 2020 national and regional R&D programs, as well as the cohesion policy. I'm convinced that you will deliver a strong message, message to the European Commission, the European Parliament and Member States contributing considerably to the defini definition of the Horizon 2020 cohesion policy and other policy documents. I'm just standing in the European Parliament. It's a very working place. A lot of people is coming around so you can even hear them. We can say in European Parliament we really wait on the result of your conference. I wish you fruitful discussions. Okay, so we had such a strong messages from Poland, from Mr. Wendel and, and from Professor Jerzy Buzek. So, but how, how it was done in, in Spain? So I think it is a, the country which, which uh, profited from, from structural funds in, in the past. And, and so now we have uh, uh, Roberto Sanchez Sanchez from Minister of Economy and Competitiveness from Spain. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, authorities. Um, well, first, let me say thank you to the organizers for um, giving me the opportunity to, to be with you this uh, couple of, of days. Uh, participating in these debates, which I think that will be very fruitful for, for Europe in general, for Spain, we, for sure we will learn a lot from, from these two days. Um, I remember that the, the, this is the, the third uh, wire uh, conference, and I remember the first one was uh, under the presidency of, Sp of Spain in, in, in Granada. So we, are, um, we, we, we know that uh, we, we can learn a lot from, from these days, from all of you, from, from all of the speakers, but also from all of the participants. Thank you, thank you to the organizers to, to give me this opportunity. Well, delivering innovation uh, and delivering the innovation union, as, as, as we, we said, it means many things. It means uh, Europe part uh, uh, um, structures uh, participating, but means member states, uh, regions, cities, corporations, SMEs, um, and of course citizens. Let me share with you some of the main figures in Spain because that will uh, help to understand where we are and what, what, we, what we need to do. In Spain, you know, is uh, 47 million inhabitants, um, um, country with a GDP of uh, uh, 1,000 billion, uh, roughly, uh, with 17 regions with their own aut uh, autonomy. That means that we are almost a federal, a federal uh, uh, country, but, but uh, we don't say that. We say that we, we have autonomous regions with their own government, their own parliaments, 
And also there are uh, two cities that with some kind of autonomy, there are the Ceuta and Melilla, which, which are in the, in the north part of Africa, in the, in the coast, uh, you cannot see it from there. Um, from the point of view of, of, the, <clears throat> of the innovation, we are now ranking in the 18th uh, position in the, in the um, EU's uh, 2012, which makes basically figures for the 2011 and some from the 2010. Uh, so we say that means that we are categorized at the moderate innovators, but uh, uh, we, are, uh, we, we are not very proud of our, of our position. Uh, of our position there. Uh, the regional composition in Spain is, uh, is uh, I would say, we have a very extreme from one, from one part to the other. Uh, in terms of, uh, of the regional innovation scoreboard, we, are, we have three regions with our medium high innovators, four regions, sorry, which are Basque Country, Navarra, Catalonia, and Madrid, the Madrid region. Several other which are average, but many of the, many of the pictures which are medium low or even low in innovators. We say that we are, as, as, as a global perspective, you say we, we are far away from the innovation leaders and, and we want to be there for sure. But um, because of the use of the structural funds and of many investment made in Spain in, in the, in the in the past years, we are closer uh, to, to, to be uh, in, in closer to, to, the, to the average of uh, Europe in, in, of the rest of the countries in, uh, in terms of, uh, of GDP. Uh, such a way that uh, for the coming period, probably only one region, which is Extremadura, will remain as uh, less developed with an, with an average of 75% below the, the sorry, with, with, a, with a figure of 75% below the EU, EU average. Several are, are in transition and several are considered already, already developed, as you can see in, uh, in that picture. This imbalance between uh, GDP and, um, and innovation performance um, and, of, and as the, the consequence, the, the, competitiv the competitivity is uh, at the core of, uh, of uh, the policies for uh, we want to develop for the for the coming years. Um, in fact, what uh, to, to help in this uh, in this uh, in to cover this imbalance and to, to have uh, more innovative regions. Uh, we, we have uh, the Horizon 2020 that should help, but also from the territorial perspective, regional policy should cover this, uh, is, 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 is the instrument to, to cover uh, this, this gap, to allow us uh, enough development in, in terms of innovative regions. And uh, as it has been said here many times uh, today, yes, to allow a better participation in, in Horizon 2020. So that means that uh, we see uh, uh, cohesion policy funds as a stairway to, to, to reach uh, competitivity, innovation, and, and a better participation later in, in Horizon 2020. To help in that uh, proposition, we created in, uh, in Spain uh, a public policy network for R, R and I. We call it RDI network. And it is designed as a meeting point between all agents and the agencies uh, to contribute to improve the state of innovation in Spain. Uh, here, the participation is made both at, at the central government and also with the region. It is one of the four sectorial networks that we have uh, financed through structural funds. One is the Environmental Authorities Network, Equal Opportunities, Urban Initiative Network, and RDI, RDI Network. The structure of this network is based on the, is, is represented by the, uh, the representation by the central government, both from the RDI departments and the structural funds department, the regional policy and, 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 and economy. Regions also in, in both sides, 
uh, the European Commission and uh, national and regional stakeholders and other, and other networks which also participate in this, uh, in this uh, network. The main objective is to uh, foster coordination and cooperation with the regions uh, to get uh, uh, smart specialization strategies in place, uh, really smart, which means taking into consideration not only the vision from the own region, but also the vision from, the, from, from Spain in general, and with uh, many eyes pointing out uh, outside to other regions of Europe and also worldwide. The RDI network it is supported by something that we call Nodes for Innovation, which are a team of consultants working with the regions in getting the most of the synergies between uh, the actions uh, planned by all the network members, especially between central government and regions. Uh, those also help to develop actions to support implementation of RDI funds and in general to cohesion policy funds. Basically, the, the, the main core is to improve cross fertilization and dialogue, improve transparency between things and between regions, and promote a smart specialization. To conclude, uh, I would say that although in terms of GDP per capita, many regions of Spain had grown, uh, remaining only one in the less developed category. And, and of course, we don't have this data. Uh, this data is not considered in the last, uh, the last uh, quarter, but uh, it's basically the same. Spain is uh, still in a poor position in terms of innovation performance, when we talk about generally. And, uh, and of course, that is affecting its competitivity. Many regions are well below average, while few others are well positioned. And a smart specialization is a path for each region to find its way for competitivity. Cooperation and cross fertilization is a way to help regions in finding that way. The RDI network is, is working to provide uh, that support. And one last idea uh, we were debating and we were thinking on uh, that uh, some um, better linkage between uh, cohesion policy fun funds and innovation performance uh, should be needed and probably that should help Europe being more in innovative and, uh, and more competitive. And that's all from my side from, for this moment. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Minister Sanchez. Maybe at this moment I, I, I would like to mention our experience because it's something similar, this uh, uh, research and innovation network. So we had such experience from the past, uh, uh, from uh, framework program five, we, we established uh, such a network of centers of excellence from, from uh, with the support of, of uh, framework program. And EFP6 we had uh, no, uh, transfer of knowledge centers, so similar network of and now in FP7, uh, this RECPOT, so, so centers developed by, by, by this specific program. And, and I may say that, that in structural funds, these centers really are the, 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 um, the largest beneficiary from, from structural funds. So as Minister uh, Wendel said, um, it, it was from one program, it was such an enormous amount of money, but together for R&D in Poland, in, in all operational programs, was spent, or is, is still is, is, is uh, uh, spent uh, about 4 billion euro. And the link between the centers of excellence from FP5, FP6, and, and today is, is visible. So, so, so practically, this is something that that we have this this experience of the synergy between these two instruments in Poland very visible. Now let me let me uh, mention another aspect. So, from FP5, FP6, we develop regional innovation strategies. So something which is today the smart specialization strategy, but this was done together with experts from from uh, European Union. So with our colleagues with much much better experience in this field, 
So many regions in Poland developed strategies for innovation together with European experts. And this was the basis for, for, for this implementation of structural funds. So, so this today we may observe the real success story and, and how we have our experience how, how it, it, it is working in practice. So. Okay, but let, let's, so, we, let, more or less politicians, and now we should have the, the, the voice from, from industry, from, from how to really de deliver this, this innovation union at, at, at regional level. Uh, Gernot Klotz, from, director from uh, Research and Innovation Department of CEFIC. Thank you very much, dear member of the parliament, dear minister, dear colleagues. It's my first WIRE conference, and I have only been engaged in the seventh framework program, so not from one to six, and I hope to be very much engaged into the Horizon 2020 and the regional policy going forward. Let's go back to this discussion about societal challenge. Why do we do all this? You know, we don't do it for patents. We don't do it for publications. We do it for the societal challenges employment, climate change, healthy aging. You know them all, and I left the bullet points because there are definitely more to come. But what does it really mean then for Europe? Wherever I should, yeah? yeah. <clears throat> These societal challenges are powerful drivers of change in the economy and society. Be aware again that innovation is about change. It's not about doing the things that have not worked in the past, doing it a little bit better. It's really a fundamental change. Uh, we have global market opportunities. I think we have to really see we are competing against the world. Now, we are very much inward looking into EU. So France against Germany, region one against region two, which is very important, but it will not succeed. No sector, no country, no sector can do it alone. So we need the cooperation of these mega trends, having a low carbon economy and something like that. And last but not least, it's from research to solution. Let me reiterate again, research is turning money into ideas. The solution and the innovation is turning then these ideas back into value for society. And where do we get the EU critical mass? I was responsible for a commission program looking at nanotechnologies and everybody was complaining that the European spending was limited. Now if you bring together the German spending, the French spending, the Spanish spending, in all of this, we are on equal footing to the US, but we can't afford to do it 27 times. Wherever I should. First you need a business case, I think, and you need industries that are willing to commit to Europe and to drive their innovation from Europe. And the chemical industry has a long tradition of being here. Uh, we see ourselves as a roots for all the sustainability trees. So you want to have quality of life, safe food supply, clean environment, all these kind of things, but you can only do it if you get processes, if you get materials up the value chain to manufacture these kind of topics. And it's clear that the trees will not grow without the roots, but the roots are also useless, so making a material, plastic, or whatever else is also not enough. We have to see how can we bring it along the value chain. What is the chemical industry in the future? In Europe, it's still one of the leading world industries here. It has been around for 150 years, so it has innovated itself many, many times. For the future, research and innovation are the major driver. There's also, of course, a recognition of the shift from the technology support to the demonstration of societal values. So whatever we do is not just a technology, it is to serve a purpose. It's also a mindset shift to more pre-competitive cooperation within the sector and open innovation along the value chain, which opens up this innovation climate to SMEs, big companies, and uh, users. Change the things we do, doing more with less, change the renewables, closed loop, and specialization. Also a visible leadership role, so we would like, or we got engaged in public-private partnership for the societal challenges. 
And last but not least, to broaden the engagement of all our companies, and CEFIC has around 26,000 members, of which 25,000 are SMEs, into the public-private corporations. Now, a good opportunity, the EU 2020 Innovation Union, and let's look at the other policies as well, resource efficiency, industrial policies, the agenda for new skills and the jobs, are of course, in the center of our attention as well. These goes down into things like European partnerships, like healthy aging, raw materials, water efficiency. I have to join into a discussion with you what this means. However, we have been talking a lot about money in the last one hour. And just to be aware, again, we have a lot of programs now, Horizon 2020, European Investment Bank, Structural Fund Risk, so it looks super. But from a user point of view, I would very much like to see if I'm now an SME consortium and I want to do something, do I have a one-stop shop on this? Can I tap into this one from my business side and not being an expert in Horizon, ask a consultant for your investment bank, a structure funds, and have five or six consultants working for me just to, to find my way through. Now, as I said, research is important, patents are important, but they're by far not enough. And give you the example of the, um, the solar panels. We can do it in batteries, we can do it in biotechnologies. I've been a member of a high level group of key enabling technologies. We looked at all this. Europe has around 30% of all the patents for these new technologies. 30% on the US, 30% on Asia. We mostly have only 1% to 0% of the manufacturing. There's no battery manufacturing owned by a European company anymore. The biotechnology, 1% of manufacturing. So how do we carry this knowledge and the investment that they have made into the research landscape really going forward? Because at the moment, it's made in non-EU region. So the jobs, the growth, the added value go there. And be aware, the research will go once the manufacturing goes from that one. So how can we carry this? How can we carry the baby from knowledge, from the science part, into the market? And together with the EU Commission, we're currently developing this bridge across the valley of death. So definitely, these programs which we discuss about have to be on the research side, yes, but they also have to be on the technology research side, and they have to include demonstration, pilot lines, to show that these things can go forward. And money is just one part of it, but mindset change, doing things differently. We cannot outfinance what Asia is currently doing because simply we do not have enough money. We don't have a political system which just says, go ahead, and we don't want it. The Americans, the Obama administration is currently printing money, and they have the entrepreneurial spirit. So we also cannot do it. So what can we do in Europe? And if you see this, <clears throat> that's country performance of a cat, and don't go into details. It just shows we have a patchwork, and I very much would like to stress again, the smart specialization process has to move forward, and it has to be quick. It has to be finished more or less in 2013 in order to prevent us. This is just colorful patterns, so you have either you're leading in photonics or nanomaterials. It just shows you we have a patchwork. We cannot harmonize first all and then move forward. We have to, to go. So what are the strengths of Europe and the innovation system which we can build here and not copy the US and not copy China? First class research landscape, a network of big and small companies here. We have well developed markets the proximity of knowledge in the industrial value chain. If I want to talk to my car manufacturing, I can do it in a two hours drive or flight. In China and other regions, I have to travel, travel two or three days. So the cooperation and the ability to deal with complexity. So for Horizon 2020 and for the cohesion policy, I think we have to work on a new innovation model, a well-educated innovation model for Europe, building its own strengths, bring back value in Europe, and have to do this in a quite a short time frame. 
Now, you need engagement of the industry because if you don't have a business case, all what we do will not be very successful. So the chemical industry itself has said, we're going to engage in the issue of resource efficiency, of resinking the water, raw materials, and the smart city is the way we live, smart grids, but also insulation of housing and then end. This is just a short view. Water efficiency, public-private water management, reduce energy for water treatment, ensure the supply of water, resource efficiency, process technologies, alternatives, bioeconomy, recycling, and a cross-sectoral approach. Raw materials, specifically on the recycling and the substitution of critical raw materials by other molecules, and as I turned around, mobility, housing, and insulation on the smart city part. In the horizon 2020, Definitely the input will be organized via the technology uh, platform, which we now renamed two weeks ago in a technology and innovation platform to really show that we do research, innovation, and skills development going forward. So that will go into the research agenda. We're currently proposing and discussing with the Commission two public-private partnerships where the industry is willing to commit. One is called SPIRE, it's resource efficient industries, process industries, it's 10 industry sectors working together, and the public-private partnership on the bioeconomy to push the renewable resource and feedstock forward. We also engage in the key enabling technologies like I showed you. Of the six key enabling technologies that Europe has defined, nanotechnology, biotechnology, advanced materials, advanced manufacturing are directly in our business case. And of course, we need also to engage in the European Innovation Partnerships, which go beyond the horizon 2020, namely raw materials and water efficient Europe. So that's our engagement. Now, how can we gain the critical mass? And traditionally, the technology platform has been linked with Horizon or FP7. We've created 11 national platforms. I would not say to bypass subsidiarity, but it was too complicated to really go into all these topics. So from industry side, we created, and we are engaged then also with the various national governments to go forward on this one. Aeronet national platforms can go in there, the EIPs I showed you, and the PPPs, and the regional of quality. So that would be a way to harmonize what we do and then offer from the industry side to go ahead through all the political difficulties. Now let's be also clear that Europe needs manufacturing. Now we have been so much thinking about we can only live as a service industry. And to us, we still need also ICT. We need all these kind of topics. But can we really run Europe on a Google model or a Silicon Valley model? I think there are severe questions to this one. So we need to strengthen the process industries. And I just want to go quickly into a program we, we have put forward. I said the SPIRE process industry, it's a conglomerate of 10 process industries to see how we, can we work together to uh, be more resource efficient and more energy efficient going forward. And this will be, if it succeeds, an overall investment of a few billion euros over the horizon 2020, both from industry and the commission side going forward. I think I'm going to skip this one. The other one, of course, I would like to mention is the skills. Now, who is going to do all this? And for that one, we have put forward, we asked our CEOs, what skills do you think your employment needs in the next years on the innovation side? So if you are interested in going forward, we're currently discussing on higher education, how can we carry this wish list into further um, claim? Numerous publications from CEFIC and the Suscom Technology Platform on this one. You can tap into this. Now, some take-home messages for both policies. Innovation has different drivers for as in research. So definitely we need a fitness check of the existing instruments, which are already, already originally developed by research. Do they really fit for innovation in timing, in efficiency, and going forward? We need a new innovation model, especially a mindset change, and not just money. If you pump double money into an inefficient <laughs> system, we do not get more uh, innovation. And we have to think again about, we always have the slogan, unity in diversity. 
If we very much focus sometimes too much on the diversity, let's also focus on the unity as we go forward. We are committed to drive growth and jobs through innovation in Europe and as a world leading industry because we think it's very much value to do it also here. Innovative ways of working together. We need new models for innovative public-private partnerships. The current models of a joint technology initiative and these kind of topics are not very uh, promising. We need to include the value chain correctness in the evaluation of programs and projects. It cannot be that we only have a chemical program or only a green car program, only an ICT program. We have to bring these value chains together and that should be an evaluation criteria for all these projects. And of course, we have to change, uh, strengthen the ecosystem of innovative SMEs and big companies. Keep in mind that innovation is not driven by only SMEs, it's only driven by innovative SMEs together with big companies. So to go forward, the one-stop shop I already mentioned and the harmonization of the public support. And we have to strengthen existing and new industries for growth and new jobs. I just threw up this map again just to remind you that we're in a global competition. This is already from the square meters uh, Eurocentric map, but we are really competing against blocks here, Brazil, US. Now, if we fall apart into 27 innovation policies times five times regional policies, we will lose this thing. So looking inside the competition in the EU, super, and we have to do this, but don't forget that we also have to look outside because while we are thinking we are walking, the others are running uh, going forward. Let me finish off. I had this nice evening yesterday with Copernicus. So let's finish with a, with a German uh, physicist from Semjan. I cannot see, say whether things will get better if we change. What I can say that they might get, must get better if they uh, change if they are to get better. So with that, I would leave it for the discussion going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gennad, for, for these strong words, uh, words for co uh, collaboration and, and, and also the, the transformation of our ecosystem for, for innovation in, in Europe. Uh, just just small intervention in this region, it is risky to say that low carbon uh, economy, so we prefer to say low emission economy. So the Krakow and Silesia is rich of coal and, and we would like to continue, of course, with some cleaner technologies. So. Okay, so I think that, that one, one topic, and it was very strongly said by, by Lambert, uh, also this, this collaboration, something new. So. so this is, uh, I see also in Poland uh, such uh, ideas for collaborating closer with, with uh, Germany, for example, to, to create, or it is already created, the Odra partnership, Odra river partnerships. We have some, some Baltic uh, regional collaborations. So, so is, is this something that, that uh, we really should, should now elaborate more in, in, in horizon, in, in cohesion policy, to, to, to foresee some, some money from European territorial cooperation or, or how to organize this such a networking, so not, not really to, to, to be concentrated concentrate in such a silo in, in one region, but, but uh, you know, to, to be more active. Lambert, yeah. Okay, it's like football playing. If the ball comes, you have to hit them. Is it? Touch the ball if he comes. I will, about this uh, cooperation, because, you know, I was a regional minister for 12 years and I, I did the job. You know, and if you got the money, said so thank you, Brussels, it's, uh, it's okay, we will spend it. But you didn't really look up, you looked down. Bringing good programs and bringing sectors together and your communities, etc., etc. This was in the 90s. It was in the gray past. So this cannot be the future as policy. We have to look up to see where your smart specialization is in relation to, to your other regions in the country, but more to the other top regions in Europe. And um, sometimes you are number, if you are ranking, eh, naming and shaming and ranking, know where you stand in your capacity, your investment, your, your quality. 
your industrial capacity. Sometimes you are number 31 in the list. Sometimes you are number 10 in the list in Europe. And maybe in one niche you are number three in Europe. Happy people, everybody happy somewhere. But the key, the key idea beyond this, that those uh, niches, those partners have to find each other in the European cooperation and making themselves in this learning process in a higher speed, not just thinking, not just walking, but running, as just said a minute ago. And personally, uh, seen from European Parliament side, we now say yes, not just in territorial cooperation as we did it in the past, we make it as a precondition that you know where your partners are. You can't even dance, you know, without a partner. So why can you make Europe compete in the world not knowing where your partners are? So this is a key point for the next period that we keep some money, let me say, behind under the precondition that you know where your partners are and that some of your own money that you bring in, you have to invest in cooperation. Let me say one thing. Krakow, I just learned, has more than 30,000 students on the Polytechnical University. More, huh? some 40,000. You know, these are such important things. And then I think about cooperation. Why do our companies go to, to, to Asia? Because they can't find uh, enough well-schooled men and women, boys and girls, to do this job. We underuse, we, we underuse the capacity that we have in Europe, in, in my view. So there might be not just doing a project together, my lord, this is not the future. This is investing together in some parts outside of your own region to have a stable Europe, to have a faster implementation of knowledge and innovation value chain. So I think I am looking for those who are coming in Dutch kind of a, a new stage in cooperation in Europe. And I think we, when we get the good signals, whether it's, it's, it's research potential or regions of knowledge, center of, of, of excellence, whatever you call it, come to us and we will help to facilitate it because we, can't, uh, we don't have the luxury to say everybody an envelope of money and good luck and uh, okay, let us know how, how you perform later. This is the last century. We are working to the next 20 years. So, in my feeling, yeah, you are here at the right moment. Tell us what you see, like the Spanish did. Uh, saying we are not just looking in Spain, but look the Spanish centers of excellence universities within Europe and even, with, uh, even in, 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 the, in the other regions. So a lot of countries are ready to go and to take this on board in the new partnership contract that will be agreed in 2013. I hope that is not just talking. This is reality, I hope. Thank you, Lambert. So I, I would like, all, this was very, very important, I think, this, this picture, and, but it was also confirmed by, by uh, several persons that, that practically if you compare the FP, uh, no, it is Horizon 2020 budget and, and uh, this cohesion funds uh, devoted to, to, uh, to R&D, so, so practically the, the same amount of money. So, so th this really is something, something new. So this orientation of, of cohesion policy is now very critical for this, this part of Europe to, to really to use this in, in synergy. And we had su such an experience from, from this research potential, RECPOT uh, program, so to establish this, this linking, this networking with the best European centers. And, and so today we, we are discussing that this should be uh, transferred to the, the cohesion policy. But, but uh, some other people are, are saying that, that, okay, synergy requires something on, on both sides. So in Horizon we should have some uh, process of identification by, by European experts, the best center. So this process of 
of providing them with the seal of excellence. Then having this, you, you may get from, from your national funds, from sectoral funds, from, from other uh, resources, because we are not only talking about member states, also some countries which, which are associated. So from your, your own uh, resources, money for, for development, development of infrastructure, of, of, of capital research capacity. So is, is this possible, Clara? So, so to, to continue with such, such a, you know, mutual uh, support from, from Horizon and, and then the rest, uh, the re big budget uh, in national budgets, but some some of the first uh, uh, possibilities are given by, by the Commission in, in this social societal challenges number six so in this, this instrument. So do you see any, any possibility to, to maintain this, this instruments? Thank you. I, I, that is, we tend to say, because it's more easily understandable, that uh, these two very successful programs have been just moved to the social, to the, um, to the regional funds. I would, uh, I would not exactly say that. What I would say is that for the reasons you were rightly saying, the amounts of money that are there, the sharing out of tasks between the two programs, that the possibility is given uh, to the structural funds to um, re repeat in a way or another these two successful programs. Um, however, as you were rightly saying, there is still a hook, if one can say so, in, in uh, challenge number six, where we close it, uh, closing the innovation divide. And this is why I was saying, and it has been repeated by several persons here, the importance of having the strategies done together by those, by those responsible for regional aspects and research aspects. The monies are there, the possibilities are there. So if we all find, and I think we can all, we can, we all share that, that the regions of knowledge and research protection have been two successful programs, let us take the opportunities that the, that the new regulations give us to make them happen, even I would say at a greater scale, we have, because we have more money. So um, they are not transferred. The ideas have been proved, uh, have proved to be successful. And they are still possible. The concepts, the actions are still possible, and the hooks are there in both parts. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Garna. Can I just remind uh, the audience that we're talking really about innovation, and innovation is also about failure. Let's be honest. So we also have to stop sometimes certain projects as we march along, because the world might have moved. You know, for instance, just one question, if the whole manufacturing of flat screen TVs has already gone to Asia, now either we leapfrog into new technologies and we should not continue to fund these kinds. So setting priorities, and let's, I know it's in a political discussion maybe difficult, but it, it's about winners and not so much winners. Now, if you invest something in one region, you might be tempted not to invest it in, a, in another region going forward. That's why from industry side we urge very strongly that the smart specialization, at least that we have a, an idea where this is because investment is a very shy beast and goes where the policy support pot is if it stays in Europe on this one.